Hey, welcome to chapter number six, Mask and Channels. Today I want to show you what can be done in Photoshop when it comes to mask and the power of what is possible. So let's dive into chapter six without delay. We'll start with this image here, the start PSD. And we're going to go ahead and bring in some pattern.psd and an end. Something like this when we're all said and done. For starters, we'll go ahead and open up our start piece. Now, out of the camera, a digital image is an opaque rectangle. To combine parts of the image with others, you have to hide parts of the other picture and to bring in different subject matters. Or, if you want to apply an adjustment layer or a filter area only to certain areas of a layer. The recommended way to do both is using a mask, a way to mark areas of a layer as transparent. So, let's go ahead and start to do our work. As a reminder, if you want to go ahead and reset to the defaults of Photoshop, you can hit Control alt shift if using a Windows or Command alt shift if using a Mac, and that will restore the default preferences and uh, can set the settings uh, as the book has them. First step is File, Save As, name as working.psd. Now we're going to use the select and mask and the select subject options. Now Photoshop provides a set of tools focused on creating and refining masks. Many of them are automatic tools and that's excellent. The first step that Photoshop wants to do is we're going to go up to select and mask under the select option. And that opens up our that opens up another menu that's inside of Photoshop. Now this is going to open up a semi-transparent onion skin overlay which is indicated by different mask areas. So the first setting is this checkerboard pattern, the onion skin overlay we see here in the upper right. And for now the checkerboard pattern covers the entire image and it's because nothing is transparent. We can go ahead and click the view mode in the properties panel and we're going to choose overlay. Now pop up this pink layer. Now the different view modes are provided so that you can see the mask more easily under various backgrounds. In this case the red overlay or pinkish color will make it easier to see missed areas and edges where loose hair is not properly mask. So depending on the image you're using, you might use a different preset. In the options bar, we're going to go ahead to the select subject button and we're going to go ahead and click it. This will do some processing, which it does a pretty good job in this instance because the subject is against a clean background of selecting her. Now the more busy your background is compared to the subject, the less correct that the automatic mode may select but with this object it's pretty simple to select her from the background because it is a simple piece. Now I will say Photoshop's automatic selection tools are getting really good and it will continue to improve I'm sure with later versions. Now we'll go ahead and click the view mode, the properties panel, and we're going to choose black and white. Now in black and white this mode helps make the mask easier to see. We can start to see all the little wispy hairs and how it's cut out. In the properties panel, so in the properties panel we're going to go ahead and click the refined mask area. We can go to color aware. And a message will pop up. You can go ahead and hit OK. And it'll do some more automatic thinking for us. Now it's made some adjustments with the tools. So notice I now have a brush tool. Now the two different refine modes between color aware and the object aware do work a little bit differently uh, and based on simple backgrounds or more complex backgrounds one or the other might be a better choice. Now I would say typically object aware works better on more complex backgrounds. In this case color aware because it's a pretty simple color background. If you wanted to test between different options between color aware and contact aware we can go to edit, go down to toggle state and that will allow us to choose between the last one now the later one. And it does do a little bit of refinement on the hair depending on the version that we choose. Now we're going to change the view mode over to the overlay mode. To better compare the actual image of the girl. 
Notice a few areas are missed on our chest and they were missed by the auto select subject. You can easily add them by using the quick selection tool up in the corner. The quick selection tool is in the upper corner of the toolbar. Go ahead and click that. And I'm going to change the brush size to 15 as the book instructs. Go ahead and zoom in a little bit. I'm going to paint the part of the shirt that I want to bring back. Now, if you're not careful, you might select too much. Sometimes the little clicks are best. In this case, if I make a mistake and cover it a little bit too far, I go back up to the negative side and click the part that I don't want. Take a couple more little or clicks. Something like that, and that will refine it a little bit more. By using the minus on the tab. You can always use edit, undo, or control Z to back up in a stage. I'm sure something Ansel Adams would have killed to have those abilities to go back and forth in the darkroom of old, the wet darkroom, the traditional film darkroom. Let's go ahead and click the view menu again. And we're going to choose on layers. That sees it with the checkerboard pattern against the blue that's background in the original PSD file. In this case, you're viewing the current settings and we'll mask kind of a good idea what happens when I was to accept these changes against the background. Sometimes it helps even to zoom in a bit more to see your changes. Book recommends even up to 400%. You can see some of this hair uh, wispiness doesn't look quite natural. Remember, I'm holding the hand tool using the space bar to click and drag around on my piece. Now we're going to refine the mask. Now it's pretty good. It's not bad by any means, but it could be improved. We're going to go and zoom into 300%. Inspect different parts of the hair that need some refinement. We go ahead and go to the select refined edge brush tool in the toolbar. And we're going to change it to a size of 20. and a hardness of 100%, so it's a more cut, hard edge. It's not going to be soft and feathered between them. And as we drag the refined edge tool over our hair, you should see that the missing hair strands falling from the bun are now included in the visible area. Click and paint in that direction. Do a little bit of selection right around the hair that's falling over by your shirt as well. Refine that section a bit. In the options panel now, go ahead and make it a size 15 so it's a smaller brush. And still the hardness 100. Now we're going to drag the refined edge brush tool over the enclosed area, that any area that should be transparent. Gaps in the hair should become masked as transparent. And fine hairs are now visible to the edge. Once you let go of the mouse, it will do its processing. Now we're going to go back to the view mode. We're going to go ahead and change it to black and white. We go back to toggle last state. Some minor differences there. Now when we're done, we're going to go out to view. Then we're going to go to fit on screen. Get it a full perspective on the screen. Now, depending on the size of your resolution, this may have a different percentage of your size, but it should fit uh, in however big of window you have available on your monitor. If you see any more hairs or things that need to be refined, you go ahead and drag them on with your brush. And it's okay if the brush is a little bit larger, a little bit smaller than the book has it, but the book has you at 15 pixels. 
Now a shortcut, instead of going back to the plus or the minus to remove or to add parts of the mask, you go ahead and hold Alt. Alt will now automatically subtract portions of that particular tool. So I hold Alt and click and drag. It's going to remove that. Now I don't necessarily want to do that area, but I hold Alt and maybe touch up a little bit of the shirt. It'll start to refine. A little bit more there. You can even do the same thing with some of these other tools, the lasso tool or other tools to add or to subtract to other areas if you so need it. Now adding global refinements. At this point the mask is actually in pretty good shape, but I could use maybe a little bit of tightening. We can fine tune the overall appearance of the mask edge by adjusting the global refinement settings. They're found in the bottom right section of your screen under the properties panel. Optimal settings depend on the image that you have selected, but in this case, uh, we've moved the slider for smooth to 1. We move the contrast to 20. And we're going to shift the edge to a negative 15%. It's going to tighten up the selection just a little bit. This is helping to see a little better selection of the hair around her. If we put the shift edge to a positive number, that's going to actually make the enlargement, the selection a little bit larger, where shift edge to a negative will actually contract it just a little bit. And it is a very minute measure. It's not talking like 50 pixels. In this instance, it's not 15 pixels. It's just a small percent, negative 15%. At this point, the output settings are on the very bottom right. I'm going to, go ahead and click the arrow to open up this particular menu. And I'm going to go ahead and select the decontaminate colors. I'm going to go ahead and zoom into 200%. And reduce the amount to 25% on the decontamination. And this removes unwanted artifacts, reduces the amount uh, of the effect, uh, and looks more like a refined position. So it's kind of a, a last setting on the output settings. You might have to scroll down. I had to scroll down a little bit on the menu. Now I see the output to, I'm going to go ahead and output to new layer with a layer mask. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. That will make this actual happen. You can see now it's actually created a new model, a model copy layer, apart from the original model layer. Now it has it in this area. This one's still there in case I want to bring it back for future purposes. But it now has done this mask added to my particular channel. You can go ahead and save your work. Control S or Command S on a Mac. The beautiful thing about what we just did is it's not destructive. It's not permanently damaging the vial. If we want to go ahead and change it, I just see my mask here. I go ahead and double click and I can hit enter selected mask and I can bring back this menu into the feature to go back to the way I want. So it's easy to go back to the settings to readjust the settings later if it wasn't quite as good as I originally thought. Now go ahead and save your work. Control S on a PC, Command S on a Mac. Now we're going to create a quick mask. To change the colors of the glasses and frames, we're going to add a quick mask because you won't need the mask after you're done with this one task. We're going to go ahead and create a first or like a temporary mask than the more complex mask that we just created. First, we're going to go ahead and turn off the episode background layer so that turns off the blue layer underneath. So in the very bottom part of your toolbar panel, we're going to go ahead and click the edit of the quick mask mode to activate it. Until now, we've been actually working in the default standard mode. Now we're in the quick mask mode. You'll notice when quick mask mode, there's kind of a pinkish red colored overlay on your layer to signify that you're in that mode. In the tools panel, we're going to go ahead and find the brush tool. Should be at the top menu, but if not, you might see a different set of tools. In the options panel, we're going to go ahead and make it 13 pixels. And we're going to keep it at 100% hardness in my setting. Now we're going to go ahead and paint the earpiece of the glasses. I'm going to zoom in a bit. And the idea is to paint just the glasses portion 
And the more zoomed in you are, the more precise you can be. And if you're better with the mouse, the more accurate that can be, depending on the mouse you're using. Now it helps. I wasn't at a full, I was at a 24% opacity. I want to go ahead and bring the opacity up to a higher percentage. So for some reason you were at a different opacity, I want to go ahead and make sure you're at a 100% opacity in the options panel. And I find holding shift after each click will draw a straight line from point A, point a to point B. So draw a click, hold shift, click again, and it draws a line from point A to point B. It's very helpful, especially when your mouse is a little finicky. The mouse I'm using is actually quite finicky and not doing a perfect job of selecting. So the clicking option is very helpful. In the quick mask mode, Photoshop treats the red overlay as a grayscale mask where shades of gray correspond to different levels of transparency. So if I have a gray color instead of a black color, it won't paint as much. If I paint white, it actually will remove my mask. I can go ahead and toggle back and forth between my foreground and background color with the letter X, if I so choose. And this goes for any type of masking. I'm going to go ahead and go to the exit and the standard button the bottom of the tools bar. Now notice that it gives the marching ants around my eyeglasses. Now I want to select everything but the glasses. So now I'm going to go ahead and go to select and inverse or shift control I and it flips the mask around. And then I'm going to go down to my image adjustments hue saturation Pops up another menu. Go ahead and change the hue to 70. And as I change that, it'll adjust in a lot of ways. Now it's given a green colored glasses. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now that my selection's here, I can go ahead and deselect my selection with Control D or go up to hit deselect under the selection menu or Command D if you're on a Mac. Let's move into the Puppet Warp tool. It gives you the flexibility to control an image in a lot of different ways. And it's actually one of my favorite tools in Photoshop. And it's used in other places like Premiere and other places in Adobe as well. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out so I can see the entire head in the display. I'm going to go up to Edit. And then down to Puppet Warp, which is in the middle portion of the menu. Now I'll mesh overline and pierce in front of my young girl. And just kind of give an outlining uh, of what her body shape is. Now, all I have to do is go ahead and click on the mesh and it will start to draw little dots on top of her. But as you do a few of them, the more options, the more, think of it like a vertebrae you have, gives you more options to actually control or to isolate parts of the body. About like that. This will help keep her torso from moving while I can now move the head with some of these different points. I'm going to go ahead and click in a point. I can go ahead and click in one of these dots. And when I do that, it actually becomes blue to make that one selected. If I hold Alt on Windows or Option on a Mac, a larger circle will appear over them. So holding Alt on a Windows or Option on a Mac, I can see the larger circle around it. I can change the angle if I want by actually clicking and dragging here. It looks like it's got about a 170 degree angle. That looks very, very painful. About there. I'm starting to control her neck. You're satisfied with the rotation? Personally, I think that looks kind of uncomfortable. I could go ahead and click away and click to another another button. Or I can go ahead and click the or I can go ahead and click the commit puppet warp tool up in the upper top part of the options panel. Or hit enter or return. Go ahead and save your work. Control S or Command S. Now using an alpha channel to create a shadow. What you can do with a shadow is pretty amazing. 
alpha channels, store selections as grayscale images. All this color information is inside of our channels, which is separate and different than layers, not to be confused with layers. Uh, to avoid confusing channels and layers, think of channels as containing an image's color and selection information, and think of layers containing painting, shapes, text, and other content of your Photoshop file. So we're first going to convert the transparent areas of the model to a layer to a selection and then fill it with another black or another layer to create a shadow. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and control click on the model's head. And this now adds the marching ants to the selection by control clicking on that particular mask to have an outline of the model. And I'm going to go up to select. And I'm going to go down to save selection. And hit save, it'll pop up a menu. And I can give it a model outline. Make it a new channel and press OK. Now nothing really changes in the layers panel as you can see. However, a channel is now created, model outline in the channels panel. So to do that, we'll go to the channels panel. And now open up here, I have my model outline connected. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer in between these two layers. I'm going to go down to the plus button here on my layers panel and it creates a new layer. I'm going to go ahead and put it between my particular files. And I'm going to name this one by double clicking in there, Shadow. Now with the Shadow layer selected, I'm going to go up to Select, Select and Mask. Now this loaded that Marching Ants that I'd already selected by control clicking in the mask, so I now have her area selected. Go over to View. I'm going to include On Black. In the Global Refinement section, I'm going to go ahead and use the Shift Edge. Go to a plus 36. In the Output settings, I want to make sure it's Output to Selection in the Output menu. And I'm going to go ahead and push OK. Now we're going to go up to Edit down to fill. We're going to go ahead and choose a black portion, which the foreground color according to here is black. So it's the foreground color, which according to the signification is black. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. If we go ahead and turn the model copy layer off, you can see that it is a black behind the young girl. Now, obviously the shadows aren't typically this intense dark, so we're going to go ahead and have to play with the opacity level to change the darkness or the thickness of the particular shadow. I'm going to go ahead and change this to 30 to give it a lighter gray color instead of a solid black. Now I'm going to go ahead and do select, deselect, so nothing's selected. I don't have this area selected. Turn back on the layer of the girl. With the shadow layer selected, I'm going to go up to edit to transform over to rotate. And under rotate, it's going to pop up in the options panel here. I'll go ahead and type in a negative 15. I'm going to drag it all the way over till I get in the X axis, 545, and in the Y, 602. I'm going to go ahead and accept the changes. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit File Save, Control S or Command S. Now I've got the shadow creator for the young girl. Now I want to create a pattern for the background. The background at the moment is just a bunch of star shapes. There's no star tool in Photoshop, but you can easily create one by customizing a shape drawn by the polygonal tool. So we're going to go back into Bridge. We're going to go ahead and open the pattern.psd into Photoshop. It now opens up in this particular tab. Then we're going to go to the polygonal tool. It's just grouped with the rectangle shape tool in the bottom of the tools bar to the polygonal trigonal. Now in the options bar, we're going to go ahead and make sure this is under shape, which it is. 
Now with the shape tool, we're going to go ahead and hold shift. Show about here to about 340 pixels in size. Now if it's not centered, you can go ahead and use the move tool or control, hold control to temporarily get it. To make it as best centered as possible. Now we're going to go up to our stroke settings and we're going to go ahead and type in or drag to 20 pixels. Add a stroke. And we're going to go ahead and make sure it's blue by clicking the fill color. We're going to go ahead and choose a blue color. Go ahead and choose, according to the book, use the one that is 27 red, 58 green, and 185 blue. And do to do that as a line color not as a stroke color. I did it as a fill color. So we want to make sure we hit the stroke, choose the color that way, not through the fill. I actually had a slight mistake there. In the properties panel, over on the right side, we can go ahead and change the rotation to a 24. And hit OK. Now that we have the blue stroke outline, we're going to set the number of sides of the polygon to 8 up here in the options bar. Change it to 8. And set the star ratio to 70%. Now, for some reason, I actually couldn't see the star ratio at first, so I had to go ahead and make this appearance menu larger. Go ahead and type in 70%. And that now gives me a star rotation by changing the appearance. In the Layers panel, you can go ahead and duplicate the shape by dragging and dropping it over a Create a New Layer button. So I'm going to go ahead and create this polygon. I'm going to go ahead and drag it over the New tool sh new Shape tool. It creates its own polygonal shape tool. And then change the rotation in the Properties panel to 24%. Then we're going to edit, free transform, path. Go ahead and hold down Alt if it's a Windows, Option if it's a Mac. By holding Alt or Option on a Mac, we're going to shrink the duplicate layer to fit inside the larger star. Something like that. We we'll go ahead and hit enter to accept that change. Now we'll just go up to view, pattern preview. We'll pop up a menu, we can go ahead and hit OK. And that's what the pattern looks like if it's duplicated in a wallpaper pattern. Turn that off, I go up to view and pattern preview yet again. That turns it back off. Now I'm going to go ahead and select polygon number one. Now I'm going to use the move tool. I can hold control temporarily, or I can select it in the tool in the uh, toolbar. We're going to go up to edit, define pattern. I'm going to go ahead and call this pattern podcast pattern. Click OK. This has now created this pattern preset to use in any Photoshop document into the future. So we're now going to go ahead and file and save as. Call this a pattern working. 
PSD and hit save. Now in this particular layer, I'm going to go ahead and take my layers now of the young girl. I'm going to go ahead to a new adjustment layer. I'm going to go ahead and create a pattern. And now I have the pattern that I selected as an option in my option panel. The book has you change it to 45 degrees and the 35% scale and hit OK. And there's my pattern. Now if you want to go ahead and make the pattern not as obvious, you can go over to your opacity and control the amount. Turn my background layer on, put it behind the shadow. Go ahead and play with my opacity. Thanks for watching this chapter, chapter six on mask and channels. In the next chapter, chapter number seven, we'll continue this project into typographic design and doing more with this particular pattern. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Better Picks in just a few clicks. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to see more videos on how to take your photography to the next level.